Father in heaven, we thank you so much for the wonder of Christmas and the joy and the peace that has come to earth and now resides in our hearts because of Jesus Christ and his birth. And I pray right now that, that you would, each and every one of us would experience your presence in our lives. That we might experience joy and peace, especially during the holidays, Lord. And Thank you for your comfort. Thank you for always being there for us. And I pray a special prayer right now for Kelsey, that you would just um, prepare her body for this surgery and that you would uh, prepare the doctors, that you'll guide the doctor's hands and that you'll be in control of the, the surgery and that um, as they take out her thyroid, that, that they will rid her body completely of cancer and she will be cancer-free afterwards. And I pray, Lord, that you'll just, um, just strengthen her body, Lord, and prepare her for this. We pray for Mason as, as he takes care of her and, and uh, encourage him, Lord, and, and uh, just give him peace and, and um, just uh, give both of them, Lord, the, the peace of God in their heart as they, they go through this, Lord. And uh, thank you for always being there for us, never letting us down. And just for the opportunity we have right now to look into your word. And as we do, Lord, I pray that you'll fill me with your spirit. That every word that comes out of my mouth will come directly from you. And that you'll just help us to, to reflect on Christmas and what it means. And, and where Jesus is in, in our lives, in our daily lives. And what an impact Christmas has on each and every one of our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen boy who, who loved going to church and he enjoyed the music, he enjoyed the scriptures, he enjoyed the fellowship, he even enjoyed the sermons. But there's one thing this little boy just hated, he did not like it at all, was the long pastoral prayers. You know how sometimes I guess pastors can pray on and on and on and on and, and this, this little boy just, when, he, when, he, when the pastor's ready to pray, he's like, oh boy. This is just never going to end. And he didn't like it at all. He liked everything else. He even liked the pastor, but he didn't like the pastor's long prayers that he had. Well, one day, mom and dad invited the pastor over for dinner after church. Sure enough, mom had to ask the pastor to pray. And this little boy is like, oh, no, this is horrible. He's going to pray on and on. It's going to take forever. And I'm starving. I really, you know... Uh, want to start eating here, and he's going to go on and on and on. Well, to the little boy's surprise, this pastor prayed. His prayer was brief and to the point. Pastor prayed, Dear God, bless his home, bless his food, and use us for your service. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, the little boy was shocked. He was astonished. And he just blurted out what he thought. He looked at the pastor and said, Boy, you don't mess around when you're hungry. <laughs> <laughs> Many times in our lives, we, we're anxious, we're tired, we're hungry, and we end up neglecting those things that, that are really most important in, in life. We're hungry, so, so we rush through a prayer, or, or we eat fast food because we don't want to take the time to, to make something that, that's healthy for us. Or we're tired, and so we, we neglect spending time with the kids, or we neglect our time with prayer with the Lord, and, and our Bible studies we neglect. And, and we're anxious, and so we speed down the road, and, and uh, unconcerned about safety, and, and we just go through life in just a, a whirlwind, and, and um, it's just a disaster sometimes. Well, Christmas is a hectic time of year, isn't it? I'll tell you what. It's just so hectic. We, we have so much to do especially this time of year, buying all the presents, whether you go online or not. I mean, it makes it so much easier going online. But, uh, it, it, you know, it's still, it takes a lot of time filling out all the Christmas cards and, and um, setting up all the decorations. When my boys were growing up, you know, we hated to put up the tree. I said, come on, boys, we're going to put up the Christmas tree. They said, do we have to? And we wouldn't get it up until, you know, a couple days before Christmas. But then we'd we leave it up until February because we didn't want to take it down. I'll tell you. But, but I love the Christmas tree. Um, but it's a lot of work. Lots of time 
consumed there. And I love all the decorations. I really do. Um, then, then you've got all the cooking and cleaning for, for company that you're going to have and all the services and the participation and all the programs at school and things like that. And it's just a hectic time of year. But I wonder, are we neglecting our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, this time of year especially? We get so caught up, we get anxious, we rush about, does Jesus get lost at Christmas I want to ask you this morning, sincerely, is Jesus missing in your life? Is he missing? I don't mean, is he, have you accepted him as your savior? Is he missing in, in your daily lives? A mother was running furiously from store to store Christmas Eve, and suddenly she became aware that the pudgy little hand of her three-year-old son was no longer clutched in, in hers, and, and in a panic, she retraced her steps and, and found him standing in front of a, a store window. His nose was pressed up against the glass. He was looking in there at, at the manger scene. And hearing his mother's almost hysterical call, he turned around and shouted with innocent glee, Mommy, Mommy, it's Jesus, it's baby Jesus in the hay. And she goes over, running over there, and she grabs him, she yanks him away. She says, come on, we don't have time for that. Do you have time for Jesus? Seriously. Is, is Jesus missing in your life? Do you have time for, for him? Do you know that you can even miss Jesus at church? You can come to all the church programs and the services and, and yet miss Jesus. Christopher O'Brien was a pastor's kid. And when he was young, just a little guy, during Christmas holidays, he, he took it upon himself to adopt the little Lord Jesus, the figurine that's supposed to be in the nativity scene. Well, he took the little figurine Jesus where, wherever he went around Christmas time. And mom and dad had placed a beautiful nativity scene in the center of, of the living room with, with an advent candle there. And, and they used it as a teaching tool uh, for friends and family who would come over and look at the manger scene. And, and so, but, but every day, Christopher would take the little Lord Jesus with him wherever he went. He was seen uh, riding on the fire truck, you know, uh, at home there in the toy room. And he was found in the family car. He was found doing major battle with the mighty Morphin Power Rangers. And he, he was all over the place, Jesus was. And, and, and every night, Jesus was lost. <laughs> and every time someone came over to the house, mom and dad would have to go searching the house. Where's the baby Jesus? We got to get the baby Jesus, put him in, in, in the nativity scene there. And, and finally, the last straw happened. It's when Christopher decided that he was going to take Jesus to church. And dad couldn't believe what he himself had said. He said, you can't get... You can't take Jesus to church. He'll get lost in church. And he and his wife looked at each other and was wondering whether prophecy had been spoken. <laughs> Where is Jesus in your life? Can he be found in your life? You can even miss Jesus here at church. You can come to church. You can sing all the Christmas songs and all the carols and listen to the story about Christmas and still leave here today without Jesus. People do all the time. Every year, Christmas after Christmas, people go home from church without Jesus. They miss the message. They just don't get it. People lose Jesus in the hustle and bustle of the season, Christmas season. They get all wrapped up with shopping, decorating, and added pressures of the holiday, and they fail to realize the reason for the season. Is there something missing in your life? Could it be Jesus? Could it be Jesus? Is Jesus a, a reality in your life? Or is he just some cute figurine that you bring out of the closet once a year at Christmas? Do you know Jesus as your personal Savior? Do you have a real personal, intimate relationship with him? Uh, there's even Christians who have misplaced Jesus in their life. Jesus doesn't have any part of their life they sure they come to church or, you know, and um, they say they're a Christian. 
But is Jesus really in their life? Do you take Jesus to work with you? Are you turning to him to help you through the stresses of work? Is he in, in your home? Do you turn to him and ask him for help in resolving conflicts in, in your relationships? Do you consult him when you make big decisions and even small decisions? Do you consult him? Do you pray and give him thanks whenever you sit down to eat dinner? Do you take the time out of your busy schedules to, to have a personal quiet time every day with the Lord? Do you spend time with God every day reading his word? You say, well, Mason, I'm not a monk. I mean, I'm a Christian. Yeah, I'm not a monk. You don't have to sit in a cave with a, with a house coat on. You know, but, but as a Christian, Christians live their life differently. Christians live their life for Jesus. There's a difference in their lives. They just don't come forward except say a prayer, and then, and then that's it. Okay, Christians are different. They spend time with their Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Is he in your heart and mind throughout the day? Are you striving to please him? Or are you living your life for him? Is he the master of your life? How involved is Jesus in your life? Christ is even hidden and forgotten. On his birthday, it is Christ's birthday. But many times he's excluded. Two women were having lunch at a very elegant hotel, and, and one of their friends came by and said, oh, they, she asked a reason for, for the occasion, the celebration. And, and one of the ladies said, well, we're celebrating the birth of, of my son. And the friend asked, well, where is he? And the mother said, well, you didn't think I'd bring him here, did you? <laughs> Same thing. What a picture of the way the world treats Jesus at Christmas. This Christmas holiday, take a look around. W what do you see? Everywhere you look, you see lights, tinsel, beautiful decorated homes. At the malls, you know, as a song that Terry sang, you know, people are waiting in line, kids are waiting in line to sit on Santa's lap. Who's waiting in line for Jesus? Crowded malls, shoppers, Loaded down with expensive gifts. Gifts that they probably won't be able to pay off till next year. Parties, programs, and families and friends gathering together, exchanging gifts, and, and eating till their stomachs are full. And that's all great and everything. That's great. I love Christmas for all those reasons. But the real purpose and meaning of Christmas is that Jesus came to earth. God. Almighty God. And he, you know... He can fit the whole universe in the span of his hand. That God, the God who created everything, came to this earth, took the form, not only the form of a human being, but he actually became a man. He became a human being. See, where's the child whose birthday we celebrate? Think of how many people celebrate Christmas who do not believe in Christ. More people will set up a Christmas tree this year than will attend a worship service on Christmas Eve or, or Christmas Day. One survey asked if you personally know anyone who does not believe in God but still celebrates Christmas. Well, 45% answered yes. 51% said no, and 4% were undecided. That's here in America. A Christian nation. I've been reading about um, how Japan celebrates Christmas. It's very interesting how, how different nations around the world celebrate Christmas. Of course, some nations do not celebrate Christmas, but Japan does celebrate Christmas. They, they put up the decorations, they exchange gifts and presents and cards, sing Yuletide songs, decorate trees, serve special um, cakes and treats. Uh, they especially make a strawberry cake uh, every year. That, that's their main dessert. In fact, they, they also, their main dish is actually Kentucky Fried Chicken. And, um, and then it, it's important for single adults to have a date on Christmas Eve. It's kind of like their Valentine's Day. And, um, and for reasons that I don't know, 
uh, but a, a, a big tradition is attending um, a concert of Beethoven's Ninth Symphony. Um, and uh, that happens on Christmas Eve. But one thing that the Japanese do not do is they do not honor Christ. They have the celebrations, but they do not honor Christ because 99% of them are Buddhists. And a missionary to Japan was asked if Jesus, if, if, asked if Christmas was Santa's birthday. I bet a lot of people in America think that. Only one half of 1% of Japan's population is Christ, Christian. So where do you think they got all the commercial version of Christmas from? From us. They're attracted to the glitter, the romance of the American version of Christmas and, and have adopted nearly everything except the spiritual significance uh, of the season. Years ago, um, during one episode of the TV show Roseanne, I'm not crazy about that show, but, but uh, th there was this one <laughs> episode of Roseanne. Roseanne was having a discussion with her mother about uh, whether or not God existed. And Roseanne's sister walks into the room and she hears what's going on in the conversation and she says, come on, it's Christmas. Do we have to talk about God now? <laughs> Seems to be the attitude of most people today. They want the fun, the party, the family gatherings, but leave Christ out of Christmas. In December 1903, uh, after a, many attempts, the Wright brothers... Uh, were successful in getting their flying machine off the ground. Big news, right? Well, thrilled, they, they telegraphed uh, this message to their sister, Catherine, saying, we have actually flown 120 feet. We'll be home for Christmas. Well, Catherine hurried to the editor of the local newspaper and showed him this message, and he glanced at it and said, oh, how nice. The boys will be home for Christmas. Totally missing the big news that man has flown. And there are people who totally miss the big news, the greatest news the earth has ever known, the news of Christmas, how God became a man. The greatest news, the greatest event ever to take place in the entire world. And, and we're missing it. People are missing the message overlooking it, neglecting it, brushing it aside, allowing materialism and other things to cover it up. We're brushing aside and hiding the greatest news the earth has ever known. And it's only because of the birth of Christ that we can have the greatest needs fulfilled. Our greatest needs, love, joy, peace, forgiveness, salvation, all happened because of Christ's birth. Take the year 1809. 1809. The international scene was turbulent. Napoleon was sweeping through Austria. Blood was flowing freely. Nobody cared about babies. But the world was overlooking some terribly significant births. For example, William Gladstone was born that year. He was destined to become one of... England's finest statesman. He was four times Prime Minister of Great Britain. That same year, Alfred Tennyson was born to an obscure minister and his wife. The child would one day greatly affect the literary world uh, in a marked manner. On the American continent, Oliver Wendell Holmes was born in Cambridge, Massachusetts. He became a famous author and physician and his son, named after him, became a justice of the U.S. Supreme Court. Not far away in Boston, that same year, Edgar Allan Poe began his eventful, although tragic, life. It was also in that same year that a physician named Darwin and his wife named their newborn child Charles Robert Darwin. At the same year, produced the cries of a newborn infant in a rugged log cabin, in Hardin County, Kentucky, the baby's name, Abraham Lincoln. If there had been news broadcast at that time, I'm certain these words would have been heard. The destiny of the world is being shaped on an Austrian battlefield today. But history was actually being shaped in the cradles of England and America. 
And in the same way, everyone thought taxation was the big news when Jesus was born. But a young Jewish woman cradled the biggest news of all, the birth of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Let's turn in our Bibles to the greatest story ever told, Luke chapter 2. Luke chapter 2, I'm going to read the Christmas story. And by the way, every Christmas Eve I read the Christmas story from the King James Version. That's what I grew up on, but this, this morning I'm going to read it from the ESV version, Luke chapter 2, verse 1 to 20. It says, In those days a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration when Quirinius was governor of Syria, and all went to be registered each to his own town. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth of Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, that time came for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son, wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. And in the same region there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flocks by night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone round them, and they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger, and suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God, saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those who, with whom he is pleased. When the angel went away from them in heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go over to the Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. And when they saw it, they were made known the saying that had been told them concerning this child. And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured up all these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. And at the end of the eight days, when he was circumcised, he was called Jesus the name given by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. Verse 7 says that there was no room for them in the inn. Have you made room for Jesus in your life? That's the message here this morning. Have you made room for Jesus in your life or ha have everything else crowded him out? Here are some past headlines uh, you may have missed in the news. Police begin campaign to run down jaywalkers. House passes gas tax onto others. Two convicts evade noose. Jury hung. Here's another. Milk drinkers are turning to powder. Headlines. Safety experts say school bus passengers should be belted. Here's one, Queen Mary having bottom scraped. Oh boy. Eye drops off shelf. Enraged cow injures farmer with axe. Miners refuse to work after death. I don't blame them. Auto killings, 110 a day. Let's resolve to do better. And then something went wrong in jet crash, experts say. I agree too. Now it would not be a big loss if we missed these headlines. But if you do not catch the message of Christmas, you lose everything. The greatest news ever brought to this earth is the story of Christmas, yet people are missing it, and we're, a lot of Christians are too ashamed to spread the news, the great news of Christmas. 
the angel came and announced the big news to the shepherds, saying, Fear not. Behold, I, I bring you good news of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. That message should go out from here. It should take hold of our heart, make an impact on our heart today as we live every single day of our lives. Has it made an impact on your life? Has Jesus made an impact on your life? Or is he missing in your life? Are you missing something in your life? That message of Christmas taking with you every day. How does it affect you? For some people, Jesus is still a babe in a manger. And every Christmas, they, they search for the baby Jesus to be part of their nativity scene so that, that they can remember the wonderful event that happened over 2,000 years ago. They don't realize that Jesus is all grown up now. He lived his life on earth, and he's no longer in, in a manger. Instead, Jesus lives in the heart of everyone who has accepted him. Is Jesus in your life? Is Jesus in your life, or is he still in the manger? Do you celebrate Christ, the Christ of Christmas, as your Savior, or is, he just, is it just a symbol of your religious traditions? What does Christ's birth mean to you today? And how does Christmas impact your life every day? Is he in your life? Does Christmas mean something to you? The greatest news that has ever come to this earth. Christmas. The Christmas message. Let's bow for prayer. Our grace, Heavenly Father, there may be someone here this morning who does not know you as their personal Savior. They've never accepted the free gift of eternal life that only comes through your Son, Jesus Christ, who came to this earth over 2,000 years ago, was born in a manger, but he was born to die. And I pray, Lord, that if someone here does, is not sure that they have accepted Jesus as their personal Savior, that they would come to know you today. That they would not leave this place this morning without you in their life, realizing the, the reason for the season, the Christmas message that should impact each and every one of us. And I pray for everyone who is a Christian here. Sometimes we as Christians lose that was really at the heart of Christmas, which is Christ. And we miss Christ. And that message kind of gets left out and neglected in our own lives, in our businesses, at work, in our homes. Even though we put up the Christmas decorations, even though that we come out to church we still have something missing in our life, the most important thing in our whole life. Even though Jesus is in our lives, he's not involved with our lives because we haven't allowed him to. All the things smother him, smother Christ doing a work in our lives. We don't spend time with him. But God, I pray that each and every one of us who know you will make time this Christmas and this coming year to put Jesus back in our lives where he belongs. We pray in the, all these things. In Jesus' name, amen. And with our heads bowed and eyes closed, this message was for each and every one of us. God wanted us to hear this message. And if you don't know Jesus as your personal Savior, I want to give you the opportunity right now to accept Jesus, the greatest message ever told, into your life. Jesus wants to come into your life. He wants to change your life. He wants to give you a brand new life, a brand new start. He wants to forgive your sins. He died on the cross. He rose from the grave. And if you just accept him into your life, you'll be cleansed of all your sins, past, present, future. And you'll live your life with Jesus in your life. And he will never leave you nor forsake you. Do you have Jesus in your heart? 
Is he in your life? If there's anyone here this morning who wants to know for sure that Jesus is in their life and you're just not sure that you have Jesus, but you want him, would you just raise your hand? Just raise it up and put it back down. You want Jesus in your life. God has spoken to your heart and you want to be sure that when you die, you'll be in heaven. Jesus is the only way. Jesus and I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. Is Jesus in your life? Is he real? I want to speak to the Christians, those who have already accepted him. Is Jesus real in your life? Is he making an impact on your life? Or is he missing in your life? He wants to be totally involved in your life in every aspect. Has, is Christmas making such a tremendous impact on your life right now, right here? Whatever God is leading you, a decision to make, I want to invite you to come forward right now. Whatever decision God is calling you to make, I want you to just get up out of your seat Come forward. I want to pray with you what this church is all about. We lift each other up in prayer. And we help each other. cards out of the slots there today and then um, we'll see you back next week for our Christmas service remember no Wednesday night no Sunday school but a tremendous Christmas service uh, at 1045 and then Christmas Eve service invite all your friends Butch would you lead us in prayer our Father in heaven it's good to be in the house of the Lord this morning during this Christmas season that we celebrate the birth of our Savior thank you Lord for for dying on the cross for our sins, for coming to earth and sacrificing yourself so that we might also have eternal life. Our Father, let us take this message to heart and even through this hustle and bustle season, let us make sure that we remember to make room for our Lord Jesus in our lives. I hope that you're pleased with our worship here this morning, Lord. We pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and all God's people said, Amen.